Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This week I wanted to discuss the three signs that give away that your relationship could be toxic or can turn toxic. Of course, when we get into a relationship, we want the best, we want to find the right partner and we want to be happy and we want to be content. No one's looking for a toxic relationship. But what happens that most times at the start, we kind of make excuses for our partner's behavior and just think that if there are things that we don't like or see slight red flags, that we can change that or that we can work on that and in time it'll improve. But someone's really showing you their true colors. Why do you want to repaint them a different shade? They are who they are and you are who you are. So if you expect them to accept you for who you are, then you've got to be ready and willing to accept them for who they are. And if there are things that you don't like, then it's best to address them and talk about them early on and then see how your partner responds to that. And according to that, then it's, the decision is down to you. It's your decision and your choice to set your boundaries and decide what you're willing to take and what you're willing to not take. So if you haven't been to my channel before, welcome. On this corner of the internet, I look at personal development as well as mental and emotional well-being and just day-to-day -day issues. So please subscribe to my channel and like and comment on this video. Toxic and traumatic relationships have a long-lasting effect on our lives and on our mental well-being. What happens that if we go through a tough relationship and a tough breakup, then that overall affects our outlook on people, partners and relationships in general. And it could really create a bad cycle for you to keep falling under the same sort of thing because of one or two bad experiences. So that's why it's so important for me to share some tools or things for you guys to look out for when you're getting into a relationship with someone. And this applies to both men and women because these traits could be evident in both guys and girls. So whoever you're dating, this could really apply to them. Um, and it's important for us to try and avoid being in situations like that so that it doesn't affect our overall perspective on ourselves, on relationships and just love. So the first thing to really look out for when you're dating someone in the early stages and getting to know someone is poor communication. Now, I know I've been going on about this on so many of my videos, which I'll link for you, to get for you guys, but it may not be a very evident toxic trait or it may not be so toxic because there's a lot of people who are not very good at communication. But in the long run, if you look at any relationship that has failed or has been toxic is because there is no communication or the communication isn't very good. So the basis of any toxic relationship is communication or lack of it. Now, if you can't communicate with your partner, either you're not talking to each other or that you're constantly shouting and yelling at each other, then when you do have issues, when you do have other problems that may be more toxic or may seem or be perceived as more toxic, you can't actually resolve those because you don't have good communication. Poor communication plants the seed for other toxic energies because what it creates is resentment, tension, frustration from either one of the partners if the other one can't communicate and therefore in the long run affects your overall perspective of each other and it creates feelings and emotions towards each other that are negative and bitter and resentful because the communication isn't great. So if poor communication is an issue, like not necessarily they're being rude or disrespectful, they just can't express how they feel, they can't address the problems or when you're addressing the problem they try and avoid it that's a big red flag and you can't ignore that. You need to address it and you need to talk about it early on and nip it in the bud so that it doesn't become a problem later. If you've spoken about it and it's not still being resolved, then you need to really think about whether that's the right relationship for you because it will turn toxic and it will just not really grow or be on the same page. The next thing that could give away signs of a toxic relationship is disrespectful language. Now, this is something that you need to nip in the bud right at the start, because if you allow someone to speak to you in a disrespectful manner and you just make excuses for that and tolerate it, then most likely that disrespectful language will turn into disrespectful behavior in the long run because you're allowing it, you're enabling the other person to feel like it's okay for them to disrespect you. 
So from language, in due time, it'll turn to behavior. And that's something you don't want to be in. And having said that, I know that it's not just about recognizing these things and then thinking, okay, I'm done. This is what she or he is doing. And it's not for me. They're disrespectful. I'm out. No, because some people do come from really dysfunctional households and families and upbringing. And what you may perceive as disrespectful may not necessarily be disrespectful to them and vice versa. So if you see things or feel that you're being disrespected in the way that your partner's speaking to you, the best thing to do is to address the first point I made is communication. Communicate that and, and express how you feel and set those boundaries and let them know that this is you find this really disrespectful and they should be aware of that. And if you do that and they're more weary and conscious of how they treat you and how they are towards you, then it's just something that in due time they're going to learn and they're going to adapt and it's just to do with like other things. But if you, st you speak to them and they're still carrying on being quite disrespectful in the manner that they communicate with you, in the way they speak, the language that they use, and you don't like that and you've already addressed it, then that's a big major sign of this isn't going to improve and if anything it's just going to get worse and turn into actions so you need to put a stop to it put your foot down and be very weary of disrespectful language and the key thing to avoid here is not to disrespect them back because all that will create is that they will get defensive towards you they will fight back and it's really not gonna resolve anything and really you can't hold them accountable for their actions of disrespect towards you when you then reciprocated that behavior then how are you going to say to them that this is making you feel a type of way when you're behaving the same way so you've got to be the bigger person take a step back and lovingly and respectfully communicate what your issue is and hopefully most times if the person really loves and respects you and wants to be with you they will of course take that into account and work on it but if they don't respect you anyway and you say that and they carry on, then you really know where you stand. Again, the decision lies in you whether you are willing to take this sort of behavior in your relationship. Final thing to look out for is bad temper. Now, most times that may necessarily not be towards you, which is why it's easier for us to ignore it and not really acknowledge it or really be worried about it because you know, if you're out with your partner, let's say, you know, you're with your girl and your girl is going crazy at the waiter or the waitress and behaving really badly towards them with a bad temper, then you should really take a note of that because that bad behavior, that bad temper will then eventually be turned towards you because that temperament is in them. That's who they are. It's not because all these people around them are constantly doing things wrong. It's because this person has a short temperament and they just flip out at even any given opportunity. And at the time, it might be new and it might be the honeymoon period, etc. So they might switch that off towards you because they like you or they're getting to know you. But the minute they're comfortable and they're settled, that temper will eventually turn to you because that's the person that they are. And they're going to be their authentic self at some point so is going to turn towards you and that is their temperament and that's not something that you want to be on the receiving end of so just because it's not happening towards you at the start but you see it happening with other people other friends family members people you guys meet and it's an issue then you should address that and take note of that and look at it as a red flag Lastly, I just wanted to say that you don't really, when I say toxic, it doesn't mean that they have to do something or you have to do something for the environment to become toxic. Most times our intuition and gut tells us if something isn't right. You feel uneasy, you feel on edge and you can't really pinpoint it. And if you feel like that, then it's for a reason. And I always, always say that you've got to listen to that because words and actions can lie but energy doesn't and your gut picks up on the energy way before your logical mind could pick up on the situation or on the words and actions. So trust that, listen to it. You know, you don't have to label things as something toxic for you to feel like I shouldn't be with this person because they communicated like this or they had lost their temper or they used disrespectful language. It doesn't necessarily have to be like that. If something doesn't feel right in it and you're noticing that you're feeling uncomfortable and there are slight little red flags, then you don't have to justify that. You ha That becomes a toxic environment. The neglect gets created and what happens is 
when one partner is neglective, neglectful towards the other, then you know you build resent and you're not getting treated the way you deserve to be treated. And so the toxic environment creates from that because people just may not be right for you. So I'd say that along the signs that I just mentioned in this video, always also trust your gut and just see if things feel right or they don't. And you don't really need to label things. If you're unhappy and it's not right for you, then do something about it. Don't look for excuses and reasons to leave. You're not happy, you deserve to be happy. If your partner's not happy, they deserve to be happy. Then you have to come together and make a decision. So I hope that this has been helpful for you guys. I know it's a lot to take in, but we all want the best for us and for the people around us. And so if you or a friend is going through something like this, where they're dating and they see some red flags, but because of COVID and all the lockdown and the loneliness, you're getting pushed into things, then really think about, is this the kind of relationship I want to be with in? Um, is this the kind of thing I want to attract to myself? Or do I deserve this sort of treatment? And if the answer is no, then work on yourself and don't settle. And if you see these signs, be proactive, do something about it. You do have control in these situations. It is down to you. And if you show yourself self-respect, then other people around you will too. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any suggestions for me for future videos, please write them in the comments below. I would love to hear from you guys. I love talking to you and hearing your stories. So please write them in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, then please press the subscribe button and I'll see you guys here next week. Thank you. Mwah.